Hi, this is Kate, and this is the second video for week two of Math 23. We've talked about the dot product and its properties. We've also discussed its definition. And now we're going to talk about some of the most well-known inequalities in mathematics. We'll be using these throughout our study of linear algebra, as well as in our work in analysis. So it's really important to understand them fully and where they come from. The dot product is central to their proof. Let's get started. The first one is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And here it is. You want to commit this to memory. The absolute value of the dot product of v and w is less than or equal to the product of the lengths of the vectors. Now this may seem totally common sense because of the way we've defined the dot product, that it's the length of v times the length of w times cosine of the angle between them. However, the problem is, is that when we go to Rn, we can no longer take for granted that cosine alpha is less than or equal to 1. Because when we're not in two-dimensional space or using plane geometry, what does it mean for me to say the angle between two vectors when we're in four-dimensional space or five-dimensional space? And the dot product, in fact, gives us a way to extend the definition of length and angle to these higher dimensions, but we cannot take for granted the things we know about when we're working in the plane and consider those as given when we're not working in the plane. So let's take a look at how we can prove the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take v and w and turn them into unit vectors. The way we do that whenever we turn a vector into a unit vector is we divide by its length. This will make sure that it is length 1. So v here divided by its length is a unit vector and w here divided by its length is a unit vector. And note that there is a plus or minus here. We use this plus or minus to save space. You could write out these two statements separately and work the algebra on them uh, independently of each other, and I will in just a moment. But just note that this is true regardless, because what are we doing here? This is either the sum of two vectors dotted with itself or the difference of two vectors dotted with itself. And in either case, that is going to give us the square of the length. And it is the square of the length of two different vectors. One is the sum of this unit v and unit w, and one is the difference of unit v and unit w. But when we're talking about the square of the length, that's definitely going to be a positive number, which is why regardless of whether we are looking at the sum of these two vectors dotted with itself or the difference of these two vectors dotted with itself, it's always going to be greater than zero because no matter what, it is the square of the length of either the sum or difference of these two unit vectors. So that's where we begin. All right. Well, we know that by the distributive properties of the dot product, uh, we can sort of foil out and expand this expression. So the first thing is, is that if we take v and dot it with itself, that would give us the square of the length of unit v. Well, unit v, this guy, is length 1, so the square of its length is going to be 1. If we do the same thing with w, that again is a unit vector. The square of its length, its length is 1, so the square of its length, also 1. And then we also have plus or minus. You could, again, do these independently but it's going to be either positive if you're looking at the sum or negative if you're looking at the difference, 2 times v dotted with w over the length of v times the length of w. Remember that these are scalars and they behave kind of like coefficients. So that's where that's coming from. All right, so all we've done is expand this using the laws of the dot product, and it, this is what we have so far. It says by algebra, the magnitude of v dotted with w over the length of v times the length of w is less than or equal to 1. Let me show you how this inequality comes about through the algebra. First, I'll acknowledge the 1 plus 1 plus 2 times v dotted with w over length of v times length of w. Here it is. Now, of course, I already took the first step, and I subtracted 2 and brought it over here. But then I just divide it by 2, and so we have that v dotted with w over magnitude v times magnitude w, or length of v times length of w, is greater than or equal to negative 1. 
Now let's take a look at when we have the difference of the two unit v and unit w. So we have a minus 2 v dot w over length v times length w. Let's take a look at that. Again, my first step already here was to subtract that 2 to the other side, but now I have a negative 2 over here. And so when I divide by negative 2, that is going to swap the sign of the inequality. And so now I have v dot w over length v times length w is less than or equal to 1. So over here I get one half of the inequality, that it's greater than or equal to negative 1. And over here I get the other half of the inequality, that it's less than or equal to 1. And so when I take the absolute value, the absolute value will be less than or equal to 1. And this is great news. We were trying to prove that the absolute value of the dot product was less than or equal to the product of the lengths of the individual vectors. This is obviously true in the plane, right? We used the law of cosines to show that. But the problem is, is that when we move out of the plane into higher dimensions, it's pretty unclear that we can rely on the fact that the absolute value of cosine alpha is what is making this inequality happen. So our task was pretty challenging. We had to show that this was true in Rn without using the really easy definition that says, oh hey, the most that cosine alpha can be is positive 1 and so obviously this is true. Instead, we just used our construction of these unit vectors and the properties of the dot product and we found that that inequality still holds. This is still true, that the absolute value of v dotted with w divided by the lengths of v and w is still less than or equal to 1. So now we do have a useful definition of angle for vectors in Rn in general. And in fact we can say alpha here, the angle between two vectors, is equal to arc cosine of v dotted with w over the magnitude of v times the magnitude of w. We've shown that that's appropriately bounded and we haven't used any circular reasoning. Let's take a look at the triangle inequality. You've probably already heard of the triangle inequality. What it says is that um, the length of any side of a triangle cannot exceed the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. So here's our triangle. We have one side, that's the vector x. We have another side, that's the vector y. And the way that we've laid them head to tail means that the third side will be the vector x plus y. And what we're trying to show is that the sum of x and y, which is that long third side, cannot exceed the sum of the other two side lengths, the magnitude of x plus the magnitude of y. This is actually much easier than you would imagine. We start with zooming in on this side length. We know that when we take a vector and dot it with itself, we get the square of the length of the vector. So let's take a look at this vector. We want the square of its length. So by the definition of the dot product and its properties, x plus y, that side length squared, is going to be equal to x plus y dotted with itself. We know that the dot product is distributive over addition. And so we can rewrite x plus y dotted with itself as x plus y dotted with x plus x plus y dotted with y. Now let's keep looking at this right hand side here. We can use the above inequality, Cauchy-Schwartz, to bound both of these dot products. Let's take a look. We know that this first dot product is going to be less than or equal to the product of the lengths of x plus y and the length of x. We know the second dot product is going to be less than or equal to the length of x plus y times the length of y. Let me write that in above them. Again, we know that this term is less than or equal to this from Cauchy-Schwartz, and this term is less than or equal to this from Cauchy-Schwartz. And so the sum of these two terms is going to be less than or equal to the sum of these two terms. So that gives us our next line down here. Note that if the length of the vector x plus y is equal to zero, 
then the left hand side equals zero, the right hand side equals zero, and the inequality still holds because this is less than or equal to. But if the length of x plus y is not zero, it's still quite easy to get to the triangle inequality. All we have to do is notice that there's a common factor of the length of x plus y in every single term. We divide that out and lo and behold, we have the triangle inequality. Both of these are important to keep in mind as you're doing your problem set, your small group problems, and throughout the course.